Hey everyone and welcome back to another video and welcome to part two of my classics collection. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys the rest of the classics that I own and I'm really excited for today's video because a lot of the classics that I'm sharing in part two are from my second favorite edition of all time. My first favorite was the Penguin English Library editions which I shared in part one and I will link part one below in case you haven't seen it yet. And then my second favorite edition of classics is the Oxford World's Classics editions. So I will be sharing those first. So first I'll go over the ones I have not yet read. So we first have The Law and the Lady by Wilkie Collins, which I'm very much looking forward to reading. We have Measure for Measure by Shakespeare, Ivanhoe by Sir Walter Scott, Jezebel's Daughter by Wilkie Collins, and Poor Miss Finch by Wilkie Collins. Then we have Chekhov's Five Plays, Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon, which I have heard amazing things about, so I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Can You Forgive Her by Anthony Trollope, and I believe this is part of the Palliser series. Then we have Titus Andronicus by Shakespeare, and then we have Barchester Towers and Dr. Thorne by Anthony Trollope, which I am planning on reading sometime this year if I can get to these. And then the ones I have read, we first have The Warden by Anthony Trollope, which is the first book in the Barsetshire Chronicles series. And I have read this, very much enjoyed it, and so I'm looking forward to reading books two and three, which I just mentioned. Then we have Poems and Prose by Christina Rossetti, which I recently read. We have Resurrection by Leo Tolstoy, which I was not the biggest fan of. We have this absolute beast, War and Peace by Tolstoy, which I read last year, and it it was a journey, I'll say that. I did enjoy this, but it was, it was quite the journey. And then finally, we have The Tempest by Shakespeare, and I really, really enjoyed this play. The rest of the classics I own are just a complete mix of different editions, so there isn't really any organization to this, so I'll just go through each one. So first off, we have King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table by Sir Thomas Mallory. And this is massive. I found this secondhand at a thrift store, and it's absolutely beautiful. I do want to read this just because I find anything Arthurian to be extremely interesting. And yeah, one day, one day I will tackle this beast. <laughs> I have this gorgeous edition of A Christmas Carol and Other Stories by Dickens. And this is from the 80s. And I love this one, love this edition so much. Then I have two of the Chatham River Press editions also from the 80s. So first I have Pride and Prejudice. And I also have Great Expectations by Dickens. And I love these. These have gold sprayed edges. I got them for like a dollar each at a thrift store and they have the original illustrations from the stories, which I absolutely love. You see that? And I first read Pride and Prejudice from this edition, so it's definitely a very special one for me. And Great Expectations also has the sprayed edges and just absolutely beautiful. I love the end papers. Just very 80s and absolutely love them. This next book is so special to me and it's my absolute favorite color as well. And that is Little Women. And I just love the dark green and gold. Those are my two favorite colors. And oh, this edition just makes me smile. Every time I look at this book, I just love it so much. I love it. And then I have the Harper Perennial Modern Classics edition of Emily of Deep Valley, which I recently read. Then I also have this gorgeous hardback edition of The Hobbit. I love this so much. And I have read the book twice and I've read it both times from this edition. This is probably one of the prettiest books I've ever seen. Beautiful, I love it so much. These next three books I got for my grandma and I have not read them and I don't really know anything about them other than they are, they have to do with like ancient Rome. So first we have Justice and Obviously this is an ancient Rome. This is like a Roman soldier headpiece. I don't know what they're called, helmet. <laughs> I can't speak English today, but I know nothing about this book, but it's really pretty. And if I ever have a big home library in the future, I think these will look very pretty on the shelves. So plan on keeping these. And then I have The Robe, which is another like ancient Rome era book. And then I also have Ben-Hur by Lou Wallace. I have seen the movie from the fifties, but have yet to read the book and I do plan on reading this book at some point um, but this was my mom's when she was growing up so I'm really really glad to have it now and then I have the complete Sherlock Holmes tales which is huge and not really practical for um, reading it's quite heavy but this has all the short stories and novels in it so this is um, just really really pretty again it's gorgeous on the shelves and I absolutely love it so 
this is definitely a favorite of mine. Then we have Adam Bede by George Eliot, which I plan on reading soon. Next I have Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen, which I love the cover. And this is the vintage classics edition. I would have liked to collect these books, but I am really not a fan of French flaps. Um, something as little as French flaps just drive me up the wall. So I only have this edition of Northanger Abbey and I eventually want to get a different edition, but it is very, very pretty. Next up, I have some Georgette Hare books. So I first have Frederica, which I read and really loved. And then I have Powder and Patch, which I have not read, and The Black Moth, which I have also not read. And I also have Arabella, but I don't know where I put it. <laughs> and that's a newer edition. I will insert a picture of the edition that I have. It is so pretty. I love it so much. And then I also have Footsteps in the Dark, which I read in December and loved this book. It was just a whole lot of fun. So the rest of the classics I'm going to talk about are all classics I have not yet read. So first off we have The Selected Poetry and Prose of Percy Bysshe Shelley, which is a modern library college edition and it's quite old. I think this one's from the 60s. 1951, even older than I thought. I do plan on reading this but very slowly, just kind of taking my time with each uh, poem and he has some prose in here as well so I'm looking forward to this one. Then we have James Joyce's A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man and this is a Dover Thrift Edition. Then we have Oliver Twist which is also a Dover edition and this is the first Dickens I ever read and it has a very special place in my heart for that reason. Then I have this gorgeous edition of The Moon Spinners by Mary Stewart which I plan on reading sometime in the summer. Then we have some Shakespeare. So we have Julius Caesar which is the Folger Shakespeare Library edition. And then I also have the smaller uh, Folger edition. So we have Hamlet and we have The Winter's Tale. And then I have three more Shakespeare plays. So we have Othello and this is the Norton Critical Edition. And then I have two No Fear Shakespeare's. So we have Romeo and Juliet and we have The Merchant of Venice. And that is it for Shakespeare. Last week in my this or that video, I talked about the fact that I really love vintage and antiquarian books just because it's so special to think of them having had a life having been loved by someone else in the past and I have some vintage books and a couple antiquarian and I'm pretty sure antiquarian means the edition is at least 100 years old and I do have a couple that fit that. So for antiquarian books you normally pay quite a bit to get them. They are quite pricey on eBay. A lot of them are actually auctioned off and so it's really special to be able to find some and I found them in a very obscure little thrift store just out of town and I couldn't believe it when I found them like I just I still can't believe that I own these and so these are the last classics I'm going to share with you guys. So first off I have a 1942 edition of Hungry Hill by Daphne du Maurier and I have to be very careful with this one because the dust jacket is very fragile it is ripping and yeah, super old, but absolutely beautiful. Then I have this edition of The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot, and you can see that on the spine there. This one doesn't actually have a date in it, but you can tell it's old just by the ink on the inside of the book. So it looks like it says Marine Langtree and then Roland and then M-A-N. I'm not sure but the ink is brown so it's not black anymore and this is one way you can tell it's a very very old edition this is just i i can't believe that i found this at a thrift store for like a dollar it's no words then i have a copy of barchester towers and this one is from the 1910s so you can see here it says 1913 again 1913 this is over 100 years old like i'm just i'm just dumbfounded this was published just before world war one so someone owned this during world war one someone read from this during world war one and that's just that's just crazy to me next up i have an edition of daniel deronda which does not have a date in it but it is just breaking apart the inside has already broken it fully comes out um but again, just looking at the, the way it was typed and everything like this is this is very, very old. Um, I did some research on the edition itself. It's an A.L. Burt company edition. And so I was kind of looking on eBay on some auction sites and they have Daniel Deronda in this exact edition and it said 1930 something. So I'm assuming this is from the 30s. Um, but yeah, just absolutely amazing. And 
I do not plan on reading from this edition because I'm going to destroy it even further, but I just love the fact that I found this at a thrift store. Next up, I have a book called Johnny Gibb of Gushet Nuke. I've never heard of this book before. Um, it was first published in the 1840s, and this edition is from the 20s, if I'm not mistaken, 1925. And the coolest thing about this one is it was actually gifted to someone on Christmas of 1926. It says, take joy in the past, but do not despise L day, whatever that means, if thou hast a wish to be wise. And then it says, to Holly with love from Seven Low. So this was some sort of like nickname. And here you can see what it says. And again, Christmas 1926, like, what? <laughs> this is just so cool. This next book is not a work of fiction, but because I was sharing my other antiquarians, I decided to throw it in here. And this is a manual of English grammar and composition. And this one is from 1904. <sighs> Mary Smith, the high school for girls, Aberdeen. Like, and that brown ink again, like, This is just amazing. 1904. So yeah, it's just literally an English grammar book. And a girl named Mary Smith owned this in 1904. Second last, we have The Little Minister by J.M. Barry, and he is the author who wrote Peter Pan. And I actually had no idea he wrote other books. So when I found this, I was very surprised and very excited to own it. And this is a 1909 edition. Here it says reprinted in 1909. And I don't know anything about it, but I do plan on reading it sometime. I have this book on Kindle, so I'm most likely going to read it off of Kindle. Just um, I don't want to, you know, destroy this book. 1909. And last but not least, this book my mom actually found for me, and I am forever grateful because she used to read us the children's kind of abridged version of this book when I was little with my siblings. And I then went on to read the adult version, the fully unabridged version. And then she found me this edition of The Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. And this is like an allegory of the Christian faith. And it was first published, I'm pretty sure in the 1600s. And this edition doesn't actually have a date for when it was published, but it says, presented to Mr. Albert Morgan by Annette St. Baptist, the 25th of December, 1905. Another Christmas gift in 1905, like the Edwardian period. I just, I, I can't, I can't. So if you guys can't tell, I love old things. I love anything that had another life in the past and was passed down and just feels very, I'm just very sentimental in that regard, but those books are so special to me and I, I just, I can't, I still can't believe I have them in my hands. I still can't believe I own them. That's it for my classics collection. It was very long. I have a lot of classics and unfortunately a lot of them are unread. So I need to change that. I need to read more of them, but I'm so, so glad that you guys stopped by, that you guys watched today's video. Thank you so, so much. As usual, I hope you guys are all doing amazing wherever you are in the world. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you are so inclined, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye.